Hi, my name is Catherine Roseland here with Boarding Geek TV at Spiel 2013. I'm sitting here with Mattia Teleglo right? yes. from uh, Rebel Hill, uh, and he's here to talk about the new game Mount Everest. Uh, hello, it's uh, the new game of the K2 author Adam Kauja, and it's Mount Everest, so it's more or less the same team of the game. And some mechanics are similar, like movement mechanic and acclimatization mechanic. But the flow of the game is very different because the goal now is uh, really different uh, too. So now you are not uh, mountaineers, you are guides who will take uh, clients with them to the top of the mountain and then back again safely, as you hope. <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yes, but of course something may not go too well. The game is uh, a little bit harder than K2 because it's also more strategic. You have to think ahead how you want to take the clients to the top and then back again. So again, you have the uh, deck of movement cards, exactly as in K2, but now you have no acclimatization cards in the deck. So it lets you just to move your guides and uh, with clients or with other stuff but you have no how to uh, raise their acclimatization at the beginning. You have to raise this uh, in the game by building uh, camps, exactly like uh, tents in K2, but now they are very different because you can leave your clients on the camp, which shows what is the level of their acclimatization. You have two different uh, kinds of clients. These ones are tourists, which are really not well prepared for the go. So you, they give you three points for getting them here. Because they're rich tourists. Yes, of course. <laughs> yes, of course. And you flip them. And then when you go back to base after the top, they give you three points again. Nice. But if they die, you have minus four points. These ones are a little bit uh, better prepared. They are climbers and they give you two points in the top and two points in the base and minus three if they die. Mm -hmm. How you do it? When you are at the base with your uh, guides, you can pack your... Uh, you can pack your guide, it's his board. You have two boards like this for two pounds, and you can take stuff with him up to the mountain. This time, uh, not like in K2, you will go to the top and back many times during the game. So uh, it's really important to make some uh, logistic chain for your clients to safely take them up. So first, uh, you can take the camp. If you take the camp, the three rows are used, so you can take only oxygen or uh, one client with you. Ah. Yes. Let's say that you take oxygen. When you go up, you can rise it exactly like in K2 for the, the same uh, cost. So it's the cost of going into the space, like here for one or here for two points. And when it's rise, it's giving them one acclimatization, and which is even more important, you can stack oxygen here. Very nice. Uh, before you choose your cards to play in a round, you can use your oxygen and take cards from acclimatization deck. <laughs> yes. To join your deck and then you can use it in the same round for acclimatization and then they are cycling in your uh, deck so you can acclimatize, acclimatize your uh, clients. Uh, how you do it? When you use oxygen, it depends where you have a camp. If you have camp over 8,000, you take three cards from the deck, you choose one of them, supposedly the best, take to your hand, you throw out, out of the game, 
one of your movement cards from your uh, standard deck and two of them you put to your deck, to your acclimatization de be uh, deck back as you like. Top, bottom, however you like. Okay. So if you have other oxygens near your camp, you can use them and you, you have better chances to get better cards next time. So this is how it uh, generally goes. If it's here, you take three cards, choose one. If it's here, you just two, take one. And here, you just take one card from the, uh, from the acclimatization deck mm -hmm. to play. Uh, now, uh, how the clients work. Let's say here, you can take uh, oxygen, camps, clients as you like. If you took them, they, you always put them on the first level of acclimatization. Here, of course, when you acclimatize, when, when there's an acclimatization result phase, they get one more because of the blue icons. But later, in a, on the mountain, there are also only red icons, so they go down. Yeah. The problem is that when you resolve acclimatization, you always resolve from the board and from the Weber tiles, which are here. They are similar to K2. They are different numbers, but they work similar. I will tell in a moment. So it uh, sums up. So for example, now it will be, for example, here it will be minus two. So you uh, when, you are, when you are self acclimatization, it goes for all of them at your board. If you have four, you have to move four of them. But when you play acclimatization card from your hand, you have just three points to split between them. Ah. So you can give three points to him. It will. He's your whale, so you want to keep him alive because he's got lots of money. Yes, exactly. Or you have to split somehow to make them. So we have to be really careful what you do and how you play because every dead one gives you minus points. Exactly. So the game is a little bit harder than K2 because you have to plan ahead a little bit more and deck lets you make uh, bigger moves. But it's also uh, very satisfying when you take them up and down and you make it uh, much more times than in K2 because you are at the top, you can be at the top three, four, five times in a game. So it's really more a game of making... Uh, the trip up and down. And yes, exactly. So some mechanics are similar, like movement, that again you take uh, six cards to your hand and then you choose three to move during a round. But there are very different cards in the deck. A lot of uh, big downward movements. Ah, worse and small upward movements. Yes, of yeah. course. Only downward. And the big one with four points down. So now the team is similar, but the game flow is very, very different because you think very differently. You are not worrying about your pawns. Your pawns will, alive, will be alive all the time, but you are really thinking how much you can risk with your clients. Yeah. Can I take four or maybe better one? With one, it's relatively easy to go up and down, but it's not so much points. No, exactly. Yes, with four, it's really dangerous but it's a lot of points so everybody will have to think and figure out for himself what would be the best in this situation which is changing constantly because of the weather tiles yes so you have to look ahead you constantly see uh, yes the weather tiles but as in k2 you see just like this so you see few days few rounds ahead when it jumps, it goes like this, and you see forecast, so you can plan when and with how many tourists can go. As I said, you can leave them in the camp if you think the weather is too bad, go for oxygen, so for example. Oxygen and come back again. Yes, and then attack the mountain. 
as you get points for top and then for base, the game has also very different flow because now it's really uh, not possible to stay somewhere here and wait. Because first, they are too fragile to do this. And second, it's a lot of points if you go back with them and maybe even easier because when you are on top, you have to go down. So even if you are here, maybe it's better to go down to the base to get another point than to try to make risky moves on top. So you kind of bring them a little bit at a time and a little further and a little further and go yeah. down again and get more of a supply. Exactly. So it's a little bit more demanding game, but I think it's really very different. And if you like some team and uh, mechanics of Kaito, it would be really great uh, difference and I think people will love uh, a little bit harder game with different way of thinking. One more thing, here is an, here is an ice fall. It's real feature of Mount Everest. So when you go here, you have to flip it and see what you find. Uh, people on Mount Everest never know what they find on ice fall. It's constantly changing. It's really difficult part of the mountains. So we wanted to show it also in the game. This is a normal space, but sometimes you can try, uh, you can find one which is a little bit harder in movement. If you don't have enough movement points, you have to go back. And there is also uh, this one, ah. which means it's not possible. Impossible. Yes, so we have to go back and maybe find some another way. way yeah. So it's a little bit tactics uh, between players in the beginning, especially some of players want to go quickly make camp, come back for the clients and other ones to acclimatize here and wait. So you can start to make some tactics choices in the beginning of the game. No, so it's, I think, more interesting. In the other side, there's more difficult board. Ah. Yes, so... And you said some more difficult cards as well, is that right? More difficult weather. More, more difficult weather, yes. Yeah, so right. you got the same uh, possibilities to use, but the environment changes for uh, really more difficult. But I will recommend starting with the easy board. Yes, <laughs> really. definitely. But you have a chance of upgrading if you find the game yes. too easy in the future. Yes, exactly. So how long will a game typically take to play? I think the first game, it will be uh, one hour and a half or something like this. And then it will be a little lower. It depends. Around an hour. Yes, it depends how many people play. It's from two to five players, so, yeah, so it depends. A little less time with two and a little longer with five. Yes. And the results are really different. People play it sometimes for 15 points. For I know players who play it for 40 points. Some players go minus. So, yeah, so it's really a lot very, of... Very, very. Very different, yes. So, but really, you have to count and think and manage your hand to get success. Thank you very much. Thank you very Sounds much. Sounds very exciting. That's Mount Thank Everest you. from Rebel DL. Thank you. Thank you.